All right, so um, I got a lot of time before we run today. One of the maintenance things I decided to work on here in the heat, like a dummy, because <laughs> it's about 90. Um, but with the race not starting until later this afternoon, it's a good chance for me to just do some of these routine things, keep an eye on stuff. And one of them is uh, checking the valves. You may hear you guys talk about doing that a lot. Check your valves, run the valves. So that's what I'm doing, and I just thought I would show kind of quickly the method that I use, which I think a lot of people use, it's a quick method that doesn't require you to bring your engine around on the timing mark for top dead center, nothing like that. Like, all you need to do is remember exhaust opening, intake closing. And you'll be looking at your valves as you go and looking for the exhaust to start to open about a quarter of the way. And at that point, when the exhaust is starting to open on that cylinder, you can then check and set your intake valve. And then you cycle the engine around until the intake is starting to close about a quarter of the way. And then you can adjust and set your exhaust valve for that cylinder. And basically what you're doing is just by making sure that the exhaust is just starting to open or the in intake is just starting to close, it gives you a good sense that, that the opposite um, is on the base circle of the cam so that you know you can set your lash properly without there being any any load on it at all. So that's, uh, that's what I'm gonna do. I've already done the other side, I'm gonna work on this side. So I'm going to be starting here with cylinder number two. So I'm going to be looking for this exhaust valve to just uh, start to open about a quarter of the way. That about there is good. I can tell that that intake valve is loose, the rocker is loose, so I'm good to go ahead and check it. One of the things I've done too, and will make it a lot easier on you if you can, is take out all the spark plugs so you're not fighting the compression of the engine at all. Makes it real easy to turn over just right where you want it for, uh, for your valves. So for mine, and you'll want to check with your engine builder, your cam card, you want to get the spec on what yours is supposed to be. My intakes are supposed to be 24 thousandths and my exhausts are 26 thousandths. So I'm going to check this intake for 24 thousandths. And again, that's my what's called hot lash and that means you're supposed to bring the engine up to an operating temperature get it warm and check it because all of these things will grow and expand your clearances will move so uh, you might know what your cold lash should be but oftentimes engine builders and cam cards and all that stuff is going to say hot lash because uh, that's what your engine's going to be operating at so it wants to be a temperature and everything grown to where it's going to expand to so I just get the feeler gauge in here I'm looking for a good snug pull on my feeler gauge for 24 thousandths and what I'm doing is adjusting this left and right to loosen and tighten if I go way loose on it well then there's no drag on it at all so I start to come into it get some drag you want to also be aware that you're not pushing down on this with your hand because that can throw you off by a thou or so. So watch for that. So I get it to where I get some pretty good snug drag on it. And then these locks, these poly locks that are inside here, you loosen them up. And then when you get ready to snug it up, you kind of snug this down. And then all together, turning this and this to the left to tighten it and lock it in where you want it and then I check and on that actually went just a hair loose but know that when you get this kind of set where you want it because you're also going to go just a little bit further on that turn to snug it and tighten it down that it's going to get a little bit tighter so you don't want to set it maybe too too tight initially because then you're going to crank it down and lock it in place it's going to be even tighter so just be aware that you're right there and then again check it good and snug I like that. I just make sure that yes, I have tightened that good and snug. So that one's done. 
Now I'm gonna bring this around until it goes down and starts to come up. That's the intake starting to close. And then we'll adjust the exhaust valve. Okay, so the intake's starting to close. We're loose on the exhaust valve. We're gonna do that one. 26 thousandths is what mine is. And that's fairly snug already. In fact, I'm going to leave that one alone, I think. On to the next one. So again, exhaust opening, intake closing. We're looking at number four now. Exhaust starting to open. We're going to do the intake, 24 thousandths. That one can use a little snugging up. The idea of checking these every once in a while, some guys do them every run, some guys do them every race. I've been kind of on a every other race schedule is to ensure that nothing in your valve train start to get weird. If you've been a push rod, you'd have one of these numbers way off, too tight, too loose, and that will tell you before you end up dropping a valve or something more catastrophic something going away in the motor. Uh, and also, when you have a mechanical roller lifter or flat tap it, mechanical solid, you know, you hear all those terms thrown around, basically a non-hydraulic, setting your last checking it every once in a while is important because it will, over time, slip a little bit. Unlike a hydraulic that always is pumped up with uh, oil that kind of keeps it there, that's why a lot of street vehicles have those because it's a longevity, you never have to worry about valve adjustment. But when you get into flat tap and solids and roller mechanicals and all that good stuff, you got to check it every once in a while. All right, so let's do that. Intake starting to close. The exhaust number four. I can use a little snugging also. The idea of making sure your lash is correct too, like, oh, well, what happened if it's off? Basically, if it's too tight, you're putting a lot of pressure on all of that valve train, the push rod, the lifter, and the cam, all of that, putting a lot of pressure on. If it's too tight, you could wipe out a roller, wipe your cam out, bad stuff so you want to make sure it's the right number if it's too loose well then all of this starts slapping the top of the valve you start beating up the top of your valves beating up the roller tips on your rocker arms Another thing is, let's say you're running it a little loose, there's a performance aspect to this as well. If you're running loose on your lash, then not only up top is it loose, but on the bottom it's loose, where your lifters are following the cam. And that's where my phone cut off. It was so hot that my phone decided to stop recording at that point, and I didn't know till I was done with my video there. Uh, I came to look at the phone that it had this message about the temperature's too hot, so let the phone cool down before it can uh, open the camera again. So to finish my thought there, if the valve lash is running a bit loose, it's not following the cam as tight as it could be, meaning 
you're not getting all of your cam grind out of it if the lash is a little loose. So you can be robbing yourself of a little bit of that lift and duration since it's not following the cam as tight. But hopefully that video was helpful to you about the exhaust opening, intake, closing. I find it to be a pretty quick and easy method, especially when I'm at the track and I want to run through the bowels before going up for a run um, and just kind of run down each bank on one side and then the other and just a good thing to keep up on and check so you can hopefully catch something before it becomes catastrophic.